Welcome to Yo, your optimal personal economy, the podcast that empowers high performers to think differently around earning, protecting, saving, investing, and growing their wealth. We see wealth while encompassing money, also including other domains that hold significance, such as health, mindset, fitness, relationships, and diet. In every episode, your host, Justin Bennett, the founder and president of Bennett Financial, will discuss how he has been helping shift conventional paradigms in order to take control of their own personal economy. By taking ownership of your own circumstances, instead of following traditional methods, you can truly yield the results that will produce solutions in line with your expectations. Let's get started. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Your Optimal Personal Economy, also referred to as YOPE. This is your host, Justin Bennett. I've got uh, a good friend of mine as a guest here on today's show, and Joe Greco. Joe, how you doing? Very good, Justin. Good to see you. Yes, likewise. Likewise. I, uh, I, uh, I know you just recently had a pretty big milestone in your life for the listeners out there. Um, if you're wondering what that milestone may have been, it's a milestone that not many people get to. Joe and his wife did just uh, have their fifth girl. So they do officially have five daughters. Uh, who knows where that story may end, if they're going to keep going. But he is a girl dad to five girls. So congrats, Joe. Oh, bite your tongue on that. Who knows where the story will end, my friend. I think this might be it. Although two years ago, this probably would be the same thing that I said. So. <laughs> we're blessed we're blessed yeah man it's uh couldn't happen to somebody better i know uh you soak it up and the girls soak it up so you got a good thing going and uh appreciate yeah, so, that yeah yeah you know so joe, joe for our listeners who may not know i mean joe is a um, veteran when it comes to being in front of the camera or microphones or being in the spotlight a you know, Joe, back in the day, was a Wall Street trader. He was featured on CNBC and Bloomberg TV many, many times. And he's grown his uh, career path to a point where uh, he's now the founder of Paleo Incorporated, which is a, a brand uh, uh, associated with executive coaching and professional development. It's something that's near and dear to my heart because I think that as it relates to th this, this journey of life, so to, it's just so often that people don't, you know, give attention back to themselves, both personally and professionally, and do it in a way where they're trying to grow, they're trying to evolve, they're trying to build. And, you know, I, I think, Joe, it's something that people could probably uh, confuse with uh, being selfish versus being selfless. And I think that, um, you know, I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about that, because I think it's something that you've become really, really good at. You've probably mastered it. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, this idea of people giving back to themselves and trying to improve themselves so they could wake up every morning and be the best version of themselves, but do it in a way where they're not feeling guilty. They're not feeling selfish. They're not feeling like they should be giving attention to other people or other areas. And, you know, because they're able to work on themselves, they're able to give a lot more to other people in other areas of their life. So is that something that you can just talk to us a little bit about, Joe? Sure. Yeah. And I, and I would say, you know, this is probably the safest arena to be selfish. This is the place that you probably would or should get away with it and, and get support from your loved ones and, and from your conscience that says, you know what, a little bit of self-care, a little bit of diligence, a little bit of throwing the periscope up and saying, you know, where am I? In, out, in the, uh, out in the sea of my life and my life's journey? How far off land am I? And am I actually headed toward the island that I want to be going toward or am I completely off, off course? So uh, selfish, it could be a, could be a good thing in this, in this perspective. And being selfish about taking a look inside and saying, all right, how did I get to where I am? What are the skills that I have that I know build me up, that people know me for, that they like me for, that they either do business with me? Uh, because of, or they just like hanging around with me and, and they support me because of, and then what are the things that maybe get in my way? Where do I keep stubbing my toe? And those are the, those are the things that we probably have to get rid of or toss. And then there's the, the magical moment comes when you've done that analysis and you look just a little bit deeper and say, what are the things I need to add to my mix? 
And if you can really spend the time periodically, you know, we're not saying spend all day every day gazing out the window, whether you're working from home or you're partially back in the office. We don't want you daydreaming too much. But if you could spend a little bit of that time and earmark a little bit of each week and certainly each month as you go out the year uh, to taking that look inside and figuring out what are the things you need to keep and polish up and accentuate? What are the things you want to get rid of or minimize? And then what are the things that you need to add to the mix? You're going to find yourself a heck of a lot farther down the field toward whatever it is you're after, whether it's a professional endeavor, a personal ambition, or even something that you're doing with colleagues or family members. I like it. I like it. You know, Joe, you and I are cut from the same cloth in that we're always trying to improve who we are being in the world. I'm sure there's listeners that, uh, you know, either are not familiar with this idea of working on themselves or have tried it and maybe weren't, they didn't have a favorable experience for whatever the reason, but like, talk to us. I mean, like, I mean, why would somebody not want to work on themselves? Like what, like let's, I know it's an odd question, but why do you think somebody would not want to try to improve how they're being and what they're doing personally and professionally? Like what, what, what would be the cause there? Sure. Uh, as you know, I've, I've worked with quite a few folks who are either partners of their firm, uh, you know, C-suite or even high net worth advisors. And a lot of times we call that the curse of commission complacency hmm. where they get to a point and they, and they do it really well. You know, they're outpacing their peers. They're at the top of whatever the metric sheet that they, that they look at themselves, you know, whatever the box score is that they measure themselves by. Mm -hmm. They look at that and they say, I'm doing really well. I'm making more than I did last year. And I'm growing my business by some multiple that by normal standards seems really good. Mm -hmm. So they kind of turn off the expectation or even the, the, the ability to rely on anyone else but themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's not, an, it's not a problem that the ego kicks in a little bit until you realize how heavy the burden is when you're doing it all alone, when you're doing it on your own. And so if we look at like two, the two ends of the spectrum, we come out, you know, you talked about how I have five little girls and, you know, we did it the hard way. So no twins, as you know, uh -huh. but each one of them has their own unique talents, their own way of going about the, you know, their day, their world, whatever it is they got going on at the, at the very limited schedule of a three, five, seven or nine year old. And, uh, but they have a lot of encouragement. They have coaching from their mom and dad, from their family members, from their teachers, some of their peers. There's all sorts of influences helping them along, helping them understand when they're being a total pain in the you know what, and helping them when they're doing really well, giving them like a hug or a high five and making them feel good. And so all that encouragement slowly starts to dwindle until they get their first job. And just about the time they go out in the career, the workforce, they better be as good as they're ever going to be or at least many people think that's the that's how they have to approach the world. Now let's go to the other end of the spectrum where they're like top of the food chain, premier athletes, C-suite Fortune 500 company, um, just amazing, amazingly successful individual. They have a team of people that are continually in their ear, in their head, helping them with their diet, with their nutrition, with their workout regime, with how they fill their calendar, how they meet new people, how they put deals together. They've got advisors and coaches all over the place. So again, the same type of encouragement that the kids had, these you know, ultra producers and high, highly, uh, high performers have. But then in the middle, we have this huge swath of people who get like sidelined because they feel like, hey, I'm making a couple hundred grand a year, or I finally notched my first year as a million dollar guy or a million dollar gal. And all of a sudden they go, I did it. I, I got all the accolades, the, the awards. I don't need any help. I'm just mm. going to keep doing what I've always done. What got right. me here? What got me to the dance? And so that's the complacency that unfortunately plagues a lot of people. So it's not a big deal. You just got to think about all of the people that are super, super successful or who are on a super steep learning curve, like our little kids, have all this encouragement, all these coaches, all these people that they, that they surround themselves with to help build them up. So it's not like you have to go to this like really soft, you know, um, kumbaya, icky, icky place. You could actually just have some really good people in your life who you connect with and you could get real vulnerable with to make sure that you're constantly improving, at least on like a week to week, month to month basis. You don't have to necessarily improve hour to hour. I think that's a little psychotic, but yeah. you know, it is probably important to check in every now and then and have a good team around you to help you with that. I like it. I like it. You know, and, and you know, I've talked in the past a lot about success and what that ultimately 
um, looks like and by definition and how that somebody can accomplish a level of success. But when we, when I throw out that word success to you and, and the way that you see the world, um, like what's success to you, Joe, like what, what personally and professionally, what is success? That's interesting. Well, let's see. I would say success, success largely is a state of mind. You know, we, we didn't have this prepared. So hopefully at winging it, I do all right with this. I would say success largely is a state of mind and how well you go about controlling that state of mind and balancing out all of the factors that either rear their, their ugly heads and, and shove you into a cave mentally, you know, and emotionally and, and maybe even physically with your, with your output or how they put you at your best and allow you to just feel like you could conquer the entire world. Uh, that is what's going to determine your gauge of success. I've got five fundamentals that I look at in particular, and that to me is like the mapping for, and I call it wealth, but success is totally interchangeable. And it all has to do with competency around these five you know, fundamental areas. The first one being family. Priority for me is family. So if I have a strong competency around my family, I'm checking in with my family regularly. And family isn't just my blood. Trust me, I got plenty of family in the house that I live in. But family also means like my people, my homies, the guys I used to hang out with from high school, as well as guys like you, JB, and then everybody in between, right? So the family part has got to be tight for me. And I have to be constantly monitoring to make sure that like my wealth of family or, or the success of my, the family uh, competency is high. After mm. that comes health. Health could be physical, health could be mental, health could be spiritual. I'm pretty spiritual, uh, you know, being, having religion as part of my life. And to me, if I'm not checking in on that on a regular basis, then it's probably going to cause me to be a little bit of a gruffy you know, guy with my family. So it could, it could impact. So if there's like a depletion of the account as it relates to wealth of health, then I could be in trouble with the family as well. And then we look to cultural wealth, which has to do with intellectual stimulation and like what you're putting in your life for lifestyle or enjoyment. Then we look at social wealth and then we obviously look at financial wealth. So on all of those levels, those five areas or those five competencies for me are how I check in and say, am I being successful here? Like, do I care about what the tax return looks like and how big the number is? Or do I look upon the year and say, dude, I killed it with my family. We brought another human into this world. We connected on a regular basis. We spent more time together doing fun stuff, puzzles, crafts, making masks like you and the girls did, mm -hmm. um, you know, all sorts of cool things. Is my culture, is my wealth of culture at like a peak right now? Am I at the all time high in that department, you know, in that competency? then who cares what the number on the balance sheet is? And conversely, mm. if the balance sheet or the bottom line were tremendous, but my life at home was a wreck and I felt like I never saw people or connected socially and I was like a slave to the desk, I'd probably also have some pretty crappy health concerns as well. So yeah. I think it all plays together. And that to me is what brings us to a place where we can mentally say, I feel successful right now. I can balance out when, it's, when the dollars are low everything else is high, I still feel successful. When the dollars are high, as long as I keep myself grounded with the rest of you know those other four competencies, I still feel successful. I'm still in a mental state of mind that says we're doing successful things. So, for, so thank you. And for two dudes who did not rehearse that at all, and so therefore you did not know, and you still don't know what I'm going to talk to you about. And Sometimes I don't know what I'm going to talk to you about, but uh, I think isn't this isn't this how we always engage? I mean, when we get together, there's like no agenda. It's like, look, I'm going to be down in Little Silver. Do you have like an hour and a half? And you're like, sure, I have two hours. I'll block I'll block out the time, and we just wrap. And that and and really, that's that's like what more people need to start doing on a regular basis. You know, mm -hmm. we went from we did it socially, we did it live, and we were kind of getting there. And then social social media, which in all of its you know, strengths and, and improvements to interconnectivity, it allows us also to hide behind other people communicating and doing it. So we can, people can like Justin and Joe for connecting and doing this, but then they won't go and replicate it. So like the charge to anybody listening right now, if I could do this is throw out a challenge to like, go find some friends and just connect on a regular basis and really dig in on things. And it'll be, no huge. Doubt. it'll be no huge. Doubt. Yeah. And, and I think it brings out a level of authenticity that, people don't realize can be brought out. And when authenticity comes out, I just think it, it heightens the stakes of the game and it gets to a place where people never realize that they can even operate and perform. And, you know, I think, yeah, there's a lot of things by way of technology that's trying to 
remove people from the way that business is done and commerce is done, but you're never going to be able to take away the humanness of, of business. There's always going to be an element of humanness in business. And, you know, to the extent that you and I, and many of the listeners and many of the people that we serve both in your business and in my business, understand that and appreciate that, um, you know, we're, we're going to be able to wake up every morning and continue to deliver on the promises that we lay out for our clients, which is to make sure that they're always moving in the direction that's important to them and they're properly protected and they're saving money and they're building wealth and they're, you know, creating something that like they didn't even know is possible. And they need to recognize that a little bit of coaching can, can bring out a lot of good stuff in people. And it just needs to be clear that you want to hang with people that are like-minded, that are similar, that are always trying to work on their game because, you know, people do get complacent. People get you know, move into that point of mediocrity and they're like, Hey, I'm content. I'm just going to, you know, set it and forget it and see where the chips land. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, we don't judge anybody for behaving like that, but I think, you know, when you're a driven person, you're always trying to aspire to do a little bit better. You're trying to stack your wins. And when you stack your wins and although they're small wins, stacking of a lot of small wins starts to add up. And before you know it, you're like, Hey, this thing is actually pretty good. And you look around and you're like, Hey, you know, life, life's not so bad because you have success, you have balance, you have all these domains that are working well, and there's not an over-concentration in any one of these domains. So, you know, I, I love it when you and I get together and, and we riff and we hang out, and we talk and whether it be on a podcast like this or, or uh, just in the office or out to eat. So I think it's great. I think it's so good. And, and you know, I think, you know, we're, we're, very, um, we're very intentional with who we hang with. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, your background, obviously a Wall Street trader back in the day. And, you know, through a series of events, it's evolved to business that you, as an entrepreneur, the business owner that you are, that you founded this business years ago, you've served so many different clients, but, you know, you, you hear a lot of excitement right now going on with, uh, with the equity markets in particular, right? Because everything's been so hot, um, you know, with your experience, because I think a lot of people don't oftentimes get a chance to just listen to people that, you know, have some experience with equity markets. I mean, like, what, what are, what are you seeing out there? What you, what's your take on what's going on with the equity markets and the excitement, the, the sensationalism and, and, uh, and, and the importance of making sure that there's some level of coaching around making sure people stay grounded in their overall plan. Like what, what's your take on that, Joe? Sure. So there's two conversations I'll, I'll, I'll bring up and you know, I, I've got to, this was this is the genesis of me understanding that the speaking game because I was doing gigs, uh, quick hits on live TV. So I had to learn how to connect, collect my thoughts pretty quickly and then articulate them out. So let me give you two, Justin. The first one has to do with trading and investing, and the mm. second one, the second one has to do with speculation. Mm. So we're gonna we're gonna just put that on board. Love it. The Love first it. one, trading and investing. Trading is not investing, period. End of the conversation. Do not confuse the two. Trading means you don't necessarily have an opinion. You're just trying to be right, okay? You don't have a thesis. You haven't done extensive, extensive research. You may have some fundamental knowledge. You may have some chart, you know, chartography skills. But in the end, you're looking to be right on a very short-term basis, so you're going to get into a position, and if you're wrong and it's going against you, you have two decisions to make. You can either make the decision to stick it out because you think it's just temporary and it's going to quickly reverse and go your way, or in, engage in being a trader, flip out of the position, go in the other direction with the trend, and hmm. make money because you were wrong. But it's not about you being right or wrong. It's about you making money, be, you know, figuring it out. So you'll go in the other direction now. If you bought the stock and it's headed south, you could either hold on to it until it comes back, right? Which makes it a, a very painful process if that takes a while. Or you could sell it, go short, and ride it down low. So that's trading. Hmm. Investing is long term. You believe in a company, an industry, a technology, leadership team, whatever it is, a, a country. You know, you believe in the market of the United States, so therefore you buy baskets of what's going on in this country. Whatever it is, right? You believe, or it could be 
asset classes because now everything's an asset class. So, um, mm. you know, this this podcast is going to be sold as an NFT for a million dollars on eBay in about three weeks. So, everybody, <laughs> put your bids in now. The uh, the uh, the it's idea. Not- for, for compliance reasons, it's not. Just to be clear. Oh gosh, <laughs> yeah, that's that, that totally could throw. Yeah, no, I got it. Regulators, and now, and that brings us back to why I'm no longer under the purview of regulatory bodies, right? I like that freedom and flexibility, but um, so so yeah. So investing really has to do with getting involved in the market or getting involved in an industry, an asset class, a sector, whatever it may be, particular stocks, so you can. So you can see your thesis play out. Now, it could be a thesis you borrowed from somebody. It could be a thesis somebody, uh, you know, forced you to take on because they manage your money and have discretion. Or it could be something that you worked on and said, you know what, I'm going to go into my, you know, my account on my phone and I'm going to buy stock, which apparently if you do this, buy stock. So that's investing. You're looking to ride that trend up on the long term. You have a thesis. You believe that something is good. Something's undervalued. It's going to go up. You believe that a company is a great model and everybody hasn't figured it out yet, whatever it is, but you're looking for longer term. And the reason why I bring that up first before I get into speculation is because so many people right now in this market, and it feeds into speculation, mix the two up. So they seize control of their portfolio or their or their or they take control of their money while they're you know preparing the sandwiches at the delicatessen or they're you know they're they're hacking up the proverbial you know butcher meat and they become traders. They they say they're investing, they say they're managing their money, but really all they're doing is blowing on the dice, throwing them down the craps table because they have no formal training, nor do they have any ability to watch that stuff the way professional traders do. So not only are they trading when they say they're investing, they're confusing the two, but they actually are so underskilled. And the availability of all these platforms right now has kind of pushed us to a point where I don't know if it's going to be another year or so, or if it's going to be another decade. Mm. But certainly right now, we've shifted from a marketplace that is driven largely by some sort of fundamentals or technicals, which are fine, to now it's driven by point number two, which is speculation. And if you and if you want to take the other side of that argument, that's great. All I'm going to say is your opening comments need to include why S&P 500 companies have P.E. ratios that are in the multiple hundreds, meaning people pay hundreds of dollars for one dollar of earnings and why things like Elon Musk's first tweet and Mark Cuban's whatever are now worth millions of dollars just like a uh, piece of art or something else. Now I understand fundamentally, hey, it's worth whatever somebody wants to pay for it. But the fact that those are things that are dominating pop culture, conversations with people that have only a few thousand dollars to even put into the marketplace, to me, speaks of rampant speculation. It's as if we have like a thousand tulip manias going on at the same time. Mm-hmm. Now, how could that possibly be? Well. Of course, there's more people on earth than there was in the 1400s when tulip mania spread through the Netherlands. But it's also because the federal government of the United States of America has pumped in trillions of dollars and said, have at it, everybody. And over the last two decades, they've pumped in several more trillions of dollars to get everybody to a point where the money starts to trickle down. Well, we're seeing trickle down and we're seeing people put money into things that are absolutely insane. The overvaluation is nuts. Again, I don't know if it's, I don't have a crystal ball. If I did, I wouldn't have time to do this podcast because I'd be jumping (laughs) off the the yacht in the middle of, uh, you know, the Caribbean somewhere. Um, But I do think that at some point there's going to be a reckoning and the reckoning usually isn't something that makes the front page. The reckoning is you wake up and realize you should have stuck to your profession and generating revenue and income and loving your family instead of like part-timing it as a trader, Mm. because now you lost the 10 grand that really matters to you. Now you lost the hundred grand that really matters to you. So leave it to the professionals. Let them be the ones who make the decisions. Let them be the ones who explain to you what those esoteric new things are and then help you determine if that makes sense or not. Don't go chasing just because you got $1,400 in stimmy from the government. Don't go chasing something thinking you can lose the money. Remember this, as I tell all my friends at the casino who who enjoy going to the casino, you're not playing with house money because when you put 200 bucks on the table and now you have like five grand in front of you, No one's going to stop you if you leave. That's your money. It's no longer house money. It's your money. So when you lose it, you've now lost five grand of your money, but you only went into that casino two hours ago, prepared to lose 200. So 
that's what I'm talking about when it comes to the market these days, man. Just be careful and leave it to the professionals. Perspective, man. Perspective. Good stuff. Listen, personally, personally, <laughs> I'm fairly certain that, like myself, you're an early riser. I'm not sure what time you wake up. I wake up at 4 a.m., but... I got I, You got me by about an hour. Usually okay. In the- Usually in the four fifty five a.m. range, but yeah, I need I need my beauty sleep, as you can oh, tell, my man. Friend. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> um, how much does routine and discipline play a part in just managing your everyday life? Uh, one of my favorite quotes from Jim Rohn. Uh, you know, there's there you have two choices. You know, you could have the uh, the pain, the pain of you have to have the pain one way or another. But there's two there's two options. It's the pain of discipline. Mm. Or the final pain of regret. The fi- the temporary pain of discipline is small and temporary, but the final pain of regret later in life it weighs tons. So you really got to look at, and it's not for everybody. Getting up early is certainly not for everybody. Having a regimented schedule is not for everybody. You know, I'm about to post something out there that's talking about being on a cleanse right now. Not to get all graphic, but you know, I do that periodically because I just feel my body's a little bit off center. And I'm not crazy. I'm Italian, bro. We eat pizza and pasta and gelato all summer long. I mean, I do not miss out. I'm not going to die and have missed amazing things. Okay. But at the same time, I know my body and I know when I've been like too gluttonous. I know when I've gone over the line and I got to get back on center. And so the reason why I say that is when I get up at four o'clock, when I used to show up on or five o'clock, sorry, that's four o'clock. If you live in the uh, central Atlantic, um, <laughs> When I used to arrive on this floor behind me for people in the podcast who can't see it, just trust me, there's a bunch of floorboards from the New York Stock Exchange over my shoulder. When I used to get on that floor at seven o'clock in the morning, it wasn't because I was like going to get the the worm. It was because I knew I needed to get my stuff done from like 7 a.m. when it was whisper quiet to like 7.45 till the early birds started to show up. And then around 8.15 when my colleagues would start to fill the desk, because at that point, if I was already there, fully prepared and ready to go for my day, they would need me and they would start to rely on me and look to me. So I acted as if, even when I was early on in my career, I acted as if I was like really important and had was able to bear that burden. And along the way, it just filled in because naturally they said, all right, he's always here. He's always got his act together. He's always behaving like the MD he would be, like the partner he would be, like the floor governor that he would be, you know? So that kind of just like moved along in natural progression. So I think discipline is so important. And I do believe in the end, if you could just even have a little bit of discipline, you know, eat the gelato, have that extra slice of pizza, but just don't do it every day. If you Mm. could take that analogy and drag it across how you go about conducting business, you know, I know it's Friday at 345, first day in the Northeast that it's like above 70 degrees. Take 10 minutes. Be disciplined and just quickly like debrief. You had four calls today. What was the point of those calls? Who do you need to send a thank you to? What do you what deliverable do you need to get out over the weekend or on Monday to make sure that you don't fall behind and become a laggard in that new client pitch uh, uh, sequence? You know, just take 10 minutes to debrief your day. You know, that's discipline. It's not like, okay, you've got to stay in house while the sun's shining and everybody's having fun until five o'clock. But a little bit of discipline goes a long way for sure. Love it. I love it. How about this one, Joe? And I'm not trying to stump you because I know that uh, you, you, you're, it's very difficult to stump you. It's probably impossible to stump you candidly. But um, when, when, when you think about um, the relationships that you have personally, professionally, you're, you're always talking to people about ways in which they can improve themselves. And, you know, it, it kind of translates to perhaps advice that you're offering right? It may be looked at in, in that regard. And so if we were to categorize it as advice that you give, but perhaps have some difficulty following yourself, what would that what would that advice sound like that you perhaps have a tough time following, but an easy time offering? You obviously don't want, you know, short answers because you wouldn't have me on the program if that was the case. <laughs> so, so first off, about about never being able to stump me, let me just tell you something, JB. Flattery will get you everywhere in life, so thank you. Um, beyond that, though, here's the deal. The first half of my life, I tried to tell people because I thought I knew, right? I, knew, I had the answer. I was smarter, uh, whether I studied or not, and the answer was not. But somehow, I had the answer. So I, I just, I, I knew, so let me tell you what you need to do, what you're doing wrong. I was, I was speaking at. And then all of a sudden, I started to analyze like why people weren't flocking to me, 
if I had all the answers, like moment of truth here, maybe mm-hmm. it's you. Like it's mm-hmm. maybe it's not all of them. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's mm-hmm. in your delivery. It's in how you're trying to share. You may have great information, dude, but nobody wants to hear it from you because the way you deliver it sucks. You know, it's not right. what you say, but how you say it. Mm-hmm. And so I view, and I and and I'm I'm gonna 42 and a half years old. God, God willing, I'll see, you know, double or maybe even two and a half times that. I don't think triple, that'd be a little insane. I don't need it. No point in being irrelevant and 130 years old. Anyway, <laughs> that's for another, that's for another podcast. But uh, but yeah, I I view even right now, I'm learning every day. And believe me, my wife will be the first to tell you, I'm learning every day how to say it better because I can never say it the right way, apparently. But uh, <laughs> but that's that's the truth for everybody. It's it's a it's a function of if you care about helping someone and you see something, then the only mission you should have is to create an environment around them and make them feel comfortable where they can see it for themselves. So fundamentally, when I get into a coaching relationship, it has nothing to do with what I see, what I think, what I want for that person. That's like, that gives me like a cringe when I think about that. Instead, and, and I believe this fundamentally should be for everyone who, who part-times as a coach, who little leagues as a coach, who big leagues as a coach, you've got to help a person see it for themselves. If you want it to stick for sure, if you want it to last, absolutely. How do you do that? Well, certainly don't talk at them. And don't seize the moment when you see them weak and vulnerable and sharing. Instead, make it all about them. Don't go right into like coach mode, tell them what to do mode. Instead, let them let it out. Like they've got a full bucket. They got to empty that bucket. Otherwise, there won't be enough room for you to put in your great advice. So let them empty that bucket of like concern, self-reflection, identifying with what the real problem was and what they could have done differently. And then at that point, just gently offer some, maybe some anecdotes, maybe offer them some stories that'll help them connect the dots very quickly. See the best relationship I find for me personally, as I relate to people and then how they relate back to me is when they don't tell me or I don't tell them, but I kind of put together and my brain is allowed to have the fun of connecting the dots where their, their neurons are able to fire and put all the, the clues together and figure it out for themselves. They call it the Socratic method, but I really feel that that's like the best way to engage with someone and be influential in a way that's positive, as opposed to like potentially shutting them down even further. So we've just started to scratch the surface of what's possible this is a four hour to, program, right? Yeah. We, I, I okay. hope our listeners are just you know getting ready. You know, they might as well just, you know, stop what they're doing for the next half a day and just get ready. But in all seriousness, I think we've covered so much in a short amount of time and I'm very excited and anxious to have you back on so that we can continue our conversations and, uh, and, and, and take a deeper dive into some of these areas, you know, because I think, I think it's just, it's just really, really exciting stuff. It gets me so juiced up to, <laughs> see you juiced up and talk about these topics because you know they're so relatable and it's it's just um it's just really good stuff and by the way i'm I'm, i was going to just ask you in closing um as it relates to your calendar for this year did you get one of those 29029 events on the calendar or what's the deal there you know i did not and i not to so you didn't want to stump me but you wanted to drag me out into the arena <laughs> feeble and we i just told you i started a cleanse the other day which means i'm at the far end of like the healthy spectrum i just deli- i just delivered a human like 40 40 feet down the hall in the bedroom you, you did or your wife did dude we're home birthers i delivered <laughs> she she pushed the human out of her body. I Got received it. the Got human it. from her. Got it. <laughs> okay. Team Look, effort. Team effort. You know? Joe Montana acknowledges Jerry Rice and vice versa. Somebody's yep. got to catch the ball. You know. I'm with you. I'm as with you. As, she, you know? as long as I don't spike it, she, I don't. I don't know if she'll keep passing him to me. But <laughs> so, so we only, as you know, we have three, and uh, I, I'm I'm still trying to convince my wife that I was a very instrumental part of her giving birth, but she doesn't she doesn't buy into it. So you're going to have to give me some uh, some positioning on uh on how maybe i could have been looked at as a as a more important role <laughs> well so let me give you one quick example of the last point you made and the, and the most current one just so we can close on that but perhaps so in the midst of being you know her birthing coach her partner and we joke around about that because when you do it five times you can joke about that stuff <laughs> there's a lot of material to work with you know um so as i'm like trying to you know help her and keep her back loose and and, and whatnot and i'm like you've got this babe and at one point it was like four hours in of 
pretty painful for her, pretty easy for me, of course, you know, I don't yeah, really have yeah. it. And I'm like, you got this. And she just turns to me and goes, I don't have it. Leave me alone. I don't have it. <laughs> now, a beautiful, beautiful person. And what a champion she is. Because then when she sees it through to the very end, and we have our beautiful fifth daughter, she says to me, I'm really sorry that I snapped at you back there. And I'm sitting there going like, what are you, crazy? You're the one who just birthed a child. All good, man. I just threw oh. the whistle and the clipboard back to the sideline and said, my coaching job is done. That's She's on her own. Yeah, <laughs> Real good stuff, man. Really, really excited. Well, listen, I appreciate you hanging with us here on uh, on the podcast. It's been super enjoyable for me. Uh, had a blast. And like I said, I do want to have you back on. There's so much more to unpack. For those that want to check you out on social, they could check you out, I think, on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and whatever other social platforms there may be yeah. out there. Of course, you could check myself out on on um, on all those social platforms. Uh, professionally, you could do Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn. Personally, it's Instagram. And then, uh, you know, check us out website bennettfg.com download the, the the podcast follow the podcast we're we're uh, closing in on 100 episodes we're super nice. excited to have people uh guests on the show like yourself joe so thanks again for uh joining us and you know we really look forward to um building on our relationship so thanks so much for your time always thanks so much congratulations on joining the century club and uh i'll be eating the popcorn and drinking the soda while you go up and down the mountain 17 <laughs> good deal i'll talk to you joe <laughs> all right bud all right see you later thank you for listening to yope your optimal personal economy we look forward to sharing more conversations with you and invite you to visit our website bennettfg.com that's b-e-n-n-e-t-t-f-g dot com where you can listen or subscribe to our library of yoke podcasts follow us on social media and as always please feel free to share this episode with anyone in your personal orbit looking to become better informed and take control of their financial landscape 